Right, let's talk about the Bohr orbits and how they relate to energy, frequency and wavelength. So let's start out with an electron and the electron will be at this position here which is n equals 1. That's called the ground state. The electron can't be any lower in energy than that. That's the nucleus right there. The closer it is to the nucleus, the lower the energy state is going to be. Now what we can do is we can take this electron, if we've put enough energy in, we can get it to make a transition up to the next energy state. And what you've got to understand is that this energy is what we call quantized or discrete. I'll write that down, quantized. Meaning we need a certain quantity of energy in order to get it to the next level, or discrete, if you like. Meaning, if we only put half the energy in, what's going to happen is the electron's not going anywhere. It'll stay at this energy level. It won't go to a point somewhere in between these two energies. You have to put enough energy in to get it to the next energy. Now, if you put it, say, one and a half times the energy in, then it might get to here, but that would only bring it to the second step anyway. So it'll only take the energy required in order to get to this next step here and it won't, um, it, it will never go up to the third one unless enough energy is put in to, to do that. So uh, what's going to happen is where we've got this quantized or discrete system of uh, energies going on. This would be as opposed to what we call continuous, that would be more like a ramp, where if you did put half the energy in, you could get up halfway, to, you, you could get up the ramp and stop there. But that's not what happens with these. So continuous is, is not the way that it is. It's a, it's a discrete system or a quantized system that we're looking at for these electrons. All right, so the electrons can be raised up to the next energy level. And we can make transitions from n equals 1 to n equals 2, n equals 1 to n equals 3, if you'd like, or n equals 1 all the way up to n equals 5. But uh, there's much more going on here as well as we go further out from the nucleus and what happens is that these uh, these distances between these this isn't really to scale the differences between these energies get smaller and smaller as we as we go further out from the um, from the middle of the, the nucleus so let's say we were to go out to say n equals five and we've got our electron out here and i'll just draw the electron here what's going to happen is that the electron will then fall back down and it can make a transition from n equals 4 to n equals 5. It'll make a transition from n equals 5 to n equals 3. And it can go all the way back to from n equals 5 to n equals 1 if it wants it. And of course there's all these other transitions that can be made from all these other energies as well. And what happens is when this electron makes a transition, falls back down towards the nucleus, it releases energy and releases energy in, for, in the form of a photon. And that photon has a certain wavelength. In fact, here's what we know, is that when we've got the electron falling back to n equals 2, it's going to release light that is actually visible. And you can see those frequencies here. So the transition going from n equals 2 to n equals 3 releases a photon that has a wavelength of 656.3 nanometers and that comes out as red. Uh, the transition from n equals 4 to n equals 2 comes out with a blue transition which is 486.1 nanometers and then the uh, n equals 5 down to n equals 2 comes out with a purple or, uh, or violet, uh, violet wavelength. It's only the transitions down to n equals 2 that are actually in the visible region. The other ones, the n equals 1 or the n equals 3 transitions, and any, all of these have uh, series names, which I'll talk about in a second, are not part of the visible spectrum. So they're outside the visible spectrum on the electromagnetic spectrum. You don't see them in visible light, but you can actually, um, you can actually get measurements for these transitions, but you'll find they're outside of the wavelengths that we would see for the, um, for the typical visible region. Now the visible region typically runs from about 350 nanometers up to around say 700 nanometers. Uh, so these fall within that range if we're talking about n equals 2. We call this the uh, Balmer series and that's all these uh, transitions that run from something down to, to n equals 2. 
the Lyman series is uh, in the ultraviolet region. We're talking about the uh, the lower uh, the lower um, wavelength regions, um, and they're around 300 nanometers, generally speaking. And we don't see those, but uh, that's in the ultraviolet region. And then you've got these uh, the passion series, which uh, goes down to n equals three. So th these are from transitions to like n equals six down to n equals three, n equals five, to n equals three, n equals four, to n equals three. And these are in the infrared region, which have a longer wavelength, so longer than uh, say uh, 700 nanometers. And, and as I said, the as we get further and further out from the nucleus, these distances or these energies get smaller, and the wavelengths get a whole lot longer. And uh, so it's only really the, the Barma series that we actually can uh, visibly see those, but we can see the other lines if we've got equipment that will allow us to, to do so.